Welcome to my craft room. I'm gonna show you guys how I make a silicone mold for Aroma Bead air fresheners. You're going to need a two-part silicone mold. I like to get mine from Mold Max off their website. They also sell it on eBay and Amazon. It's not cheap, by the way, but you're gonna save so much time. You also need your cookie cutters and a baking sheet as well as parchment paper or a silicone placement mat. I learned the hard way. Another tip, I like to use old bullet shells or shotgun shells or whatever they're called, who knows, or these um, smooth bolts or nuts. What are they called? Who knows? Anywho, you're gonna bake your air freshener like you normally would. This time though, you're gonna bake it a little longer than normal. I start at the bottom of my toaster oven. I cook that for about 10 minutes at 360. And then I bump it up to the top of my toaster oven. You're trying to create a really great seal. You're gonna overcook these guys because, well, you need to create a seal. You'll see why in a little bit probably going to ruin your cookie cutters. Once you take your air fresheners out, let them cool and then trim them. Trim those pieces uh, that melted at the bottom because you want a nice clean mold you're going to use. I use a nail file to get into those really small crevices to get out the, the, the rubber, the melted aroma beads. Um, careful of your own nails. Go ahead, give your nails a file if you need to while you're at it. I know I had to. And sometimes it's a little tricky to get the melted rubber out. So I use uh, nail clippers. Hey, we gotta be resourceful, right? Now go ahead and pop out your nail or screw or bullet casing, whatever it is you're using. And I reverse it. You wanna have a nice flush surface on the bottom. And while you're at it, check on your nails. I chipped mine. Now you need some gulf wax or paraffin wax. You're gonna melt that wax and I melt mine in an old canned bean can. Now this is where it gets a little messy. I'm gonna fill up my cookie cutters with my air fresheners still in it with the wax. Be careful, go slow. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this and I'd love to know if you can figure it out. But for me, I'm trying to create a solid piece that I can mold. And I don't want to use all my aroma beads, even though I used yucky smelling aroma beads. Have I mentioned don't buy cheap fragrance oils off of eBay or Amazon just because they're cheap? They smell cheap. Ugh. Okay, let those dry. Now gently take out the nail or screw. Now here's the part where I added more beads to the pan, put them in the oven, let them overcook a little bit, take them out, they're nice and melted. We're gonna then put our cookie cutters on top of this, it's gonna create a seal. Now some of that wax is gonna melt a little bit and you want that because that's gonna create a seal so the silicone won't seep underneath your mold. And then I get some Q-tips and I stick the Q-tips in the hole because we need that negative space to go all the way through the hole. Yep, soak up all the wax 
and push all the way down through. And go ahead and keep that Q-tip in that hole as you prepare your silicone. You'll need a scale and a bowl. Make sure your scale is turned on once you have your bowl on top, so it's set to zero. This bowl has been used quite a few times, as you can see. Now I'm gonna add part A of my two-part silicone mold. I'm adding 700 grams and this is a 10 to one ratio. So now I'm gonna add 70 grams of part B. Shake it up, shake it, shake it, shake it. Make sure it is completely mixed. Make sure you reset your scale back to zero so you get an accurate reading. This one's gonna be pink. Sometimes they're yellow, sometimes they're purple. This one's pink. I don't know why. Just make sure it's a part A and part B silicone mold mix. Now mix it up really, really well. Let's go fast motion here. Ooh. Look how pretty that is. Make sure you get all the stuff at the bottom. Scoop up all the white part, mix it with the pink or yellow or purple, whatever it is they send you. Yeah, and don't get any hair in it because that's gross. Because then when you bake your mold, um, oh, and cheers. Uh, yeah, no hair, that's gross. Pull your hair back. Hair smells gross when it's cooking at 350 degrees. Now pour it all over your pan, but save about a third. I'll tell you why in a minute. Make sure and scoop all that yummy silicone into the holes. That negative space is really important and you'll never have to use screws or roofing nails or whatever it is you use again. Scoop, scoop, scoop and spread. Kind of satisfying. Now I'm gonna tilt and tilt and tilt again to make sure the silicone gets in all the crevices of my shapes. Tilt it around. It should be very viscous right now. Just try not to drop it or spill it or drip it. Oh, cheers again. Um, and one more little scoopy scoop, making sure it's in all the holes, covering up all the shapes. Good, that looks lovely. Now leave it, leave it. Go check on your kids. Make sure they're doing their homework or chores or, you know, something productive. Or do your laundry or make your bed. I don't know, clean your car. Nah, water your plants. Do something you love. Play with your cats or chickens. Just leave it for about 30 to 45 minutes. You want, oh, well, there's that. Um, you want that silicone to harden. Hi, cheers again. Uh, you want it to harden a little more. And, you know, while you're at it, fix your hair. See if you can remember how to wear makeup, lipstick, not so much. After about 30 to 45 minutes, come on back to your bowl that has about a third of that mixture left. It should be a little bit thicker now. Um, I do this so that that thicker silicone 
will stick to the top of the shape. Make sure you get it all out. Now go to bed, wait 24 hours for your mold to cure. Watch TV or, or actually don't watch TV. Just go to bed.